Hello everybody and welcome back to Tip Tart and welcome back to Intro to Adobe Animate 2018. We are making this little rocking dude and so far we have done this. <laughs> uh, not much, but it's looking pretty good. Last time we did some shape tweens, we did some easing and we're going to carry on with that sort of thing today. Um, the first thing we're going to do, however, is give ourselves a little bit more breathing room in this layers palette and we're happy with the body now, um, but it's kind of blocking what we want to see. So what we're going to do is we're going to lock this and we're going to click this little outline icon here next to the lock. And what that does is it doesn't change our layer physically, it just changes how we, we see it and it changes it from a full um, display to just an outline. So anything we've drawn, we can only see the outlines of that. Um, okay, we're happy with the body. We can see what's going on if we hit play, but it's not getting in our way. So that's good news. What we're gonna draw next now is probably, let's go for the mouth. Okay, that's probably the most important thing. Let's create a new layer and we'll call this one mouth. And as you can see, it's created enough frames to fill where the rest of our um, frames have been made in the other animations. So this is one long blank keyframe at the moment. Um, we're going to draw the mouth in the same way as we did uh, before by just grabbing our pen tool. This time, however, we're going to make it um, yellow instead. He's going to have big, chunky yellow lips. So we're going to grab this pen tool and we're just going to start drawing out our closed mouth. Now I'm not following the sketch completely, I'm kind of evening it out a little bit. Uh, I can bring back my other shape if I want to start to see what that's going to look like on top of it. For example, that looks pretty good I think. Let's fill this guy in um, with a yellow colour. Yeah, that looks okay. I'm going to grab this like we did before. So if I click once, I'm only going to select the fill. If I double click, I'll select the fill and the stroke. And I'm just going to chunken it up a little bit, like so. Maybe rotate him around a tiny bit as well. Okay, pretty happy with that. That looks pretty good. I'm going to go to my last frame where obviously we want everything to be the same. And I'm going to hit F6. That's going to create a new keyframe and it's going to keep it the same. We're going to go over to the middle again like we did before. And now we're going to create the outside. I'm going to turn on my onion skin tool so I can see this. And I'm just going to start drawing. Maybe we'll have him be oh, really, really angry. Oh, really, really wide as he goes to catch this, whatever it is that he's eating. Let's have him come out a bit further like so. And a bit more like that as well. Let's fix this positioning a little bit. Let's maybe round off these shapes a little bit. Like so. Yeah, that looks good to me. And then let's fill this sucker in. Um, maybe this could do with a bit of tweaking here. So I'm just going to reposition that. Directly select this portion here. Maybe flatten him out a little bit. Yeah, that looks good to me. Okay. I think this looks a little bit wonky now. No, I think that looks okay. Not bad at all. Let's add a shape tween. Same as we did before. Create a new shape tween. Create a new shape tween. For this one, we're lucky. We don't have to add any shape hints like we did for the other. However, it doesn't have the same easing that our body has, so we have to apply that easing. Rather than doing it twice, I'm just gonna select all of those frames, and I'm just gonna go over here to our ease in, ease out, and double click cubic, and that should apply it. There we go. Nice and easy, looks good to me. Let's lock and outline the mouth and the body. There you go, looking pretty nice. All right, awesome. Let's leave the mouth for now because that's going to get a bit complicated to do all the teeth and tongue. And we'll come back to that a bit later on. What we will do now is we will create the horns because that illustrates a point well for when we come to do the hair later on. For now, I'm just going to go back over to my uh, pen tool and I'm going to draw a horn. Instead of yellow, however, these are going to be white. So I'm just going to grab that from my palette and I'm going to zoom in by holding control and then scrolling. And then I'm going to press space and that allows me to pan around so that I can control my screen a little bit better. And then I'm just going to trace out some of my layers. Oops. However, I didn't create the right layer. I'm still on the mouth. I'm going to have to create a new layer here. 
Oops, excuse me. And call this one left horn. Just going to start drawing out a shape here for the horn. So I'm going to come up a bit further like that. And then twist back down, maybe like that. That looks pretty good. Um, let's fill this guy in. And let's make it be a white fill. And yeah, I'm pretty happy with that. Let me double click this. And now we could shape between this, but it's going to be a bit of a weird shape. And I can already tell we're going to need a load of shape hints to keep it together. So instead, I'm going to turn this into a symbol. And this is our first symbol. Now, if I hit F8, that's going to create a new symbol. And what this basically does it, it sort of stops me from editing the shape of this without going inside, kind of like grouping it um, in Illustrator. And I'm going to call this one Horn. OK. Now I'm going to leave the type as graphic, but we'll go more into that later on. At the moment, it doesn't really matter. And I'm going to hit OK. And you can see now that our shape is surrounded by a blue box. OK, now if we would select any part of our mouth or lips, we get this kind of um, dotted effect and we can select the fill and stroke individually. If we select our horn here, we can't do any of that. We only can select the whole thing and move it around. If you did want to, adjust that you need to double click inside the horn and then you can start editing like you did before but whoa what's all this craziness our timeline is gone that's because each um, symbol that you make has its own personalized timeline okay and this will be important when we get to animating the hair later on for now suffice to say that you're basically inside of a group and that group you can see here we're in scene one and we're inside of the horn if i double click anywhere else we can just go back to scene one, double click inside the horn, we'll go inside the horn. Back to scene one, our animation comes back inside the horn, our animation goes away. Now, the importance of this is that the frames inside of our animation, once it's on the timeline, are directly representative of the frames and related to the frames outside. If I were to, for example, at half a second here on frame 12, make this horn a different color, green, for example, and then give it enough frames to last the length of our looping animation. So it goes from white to green. If inside of scene one, you can see that that is respected. It goes from white to green, but we don't see any of the keyframes or anything that are happening inside there. Our keyframe here is missing because it's inside. And if you watch the timeline as I drop in and out, you'll see how that's related to each other. For this, we don't actually need to do any of that. So I can clear that keyframe and just have it be one frame that lasts um, one second. And I can go back to my scene. If I go to my free transform tool here, I can move the anchor point to where the anchor point of the horn actually hits his head. And I can start to animate this guy. So put a new keyframe on the last frame of our animation and a new keyframe on our middle frame here and turn on onion skin. When I move this guy over, I can just rotate him a little bit around and if I zoom out, it'll help me give an understanding of what our guy's actually doing. And I think something like that's going to look pretty good. OK, now for this animation, we cannot use a shape tween. And that is because this is no longer a shape. It is a symbol. If we were to drop inside this symbol, we could do a shape tween because this is a shape. Outside of it, however, we cannot. We have to use something else. This is called a motion tween. For this instance, I'm going to use a classic tween. It works very similarly to the motion tween, but is a lot better for simpler stuff, which is what this is. So I'm going to create a classic tween. Now, fundamentally, it does the exact same thing as a shape tween. However, um, you can only do it to symbols. So if you look at that, it's blue instead of green, but it's still doing the same thing. It's still moving it and generating those frames in between. OK, let's do another classic tween on this bit returning back here. And like always, we can still apply the same easing. Ease in, out, cubic. And on this one too, ease in and out, cubic. And now our little horn is attached to our dude's head. I'm not sure I like that positioning. I think it should be over to the left a little bit more because otherwise it looks like it's sliding over his head as he opens his mouth. There you go. Perfect. What we're going to do now is we're just going to take this graphic here and copy it. And then we're going to create a new layer and call this one right horn. And we're going to paste it. 
However, we want this horn to be A, flipped around. So you can go to Modify, Transform, Flip Horizontal, and that will flip our horn around. And once we position it, we want it to be behind our pink body as well. So we can just drag that down below the body layer and it starts to be hidden behind of our monster. Now we do the same thing. F6 on the last frame there. F6 on the middle frame for a new keyframe and just position it in place and rotate around until we're happy with what that looks like. I think something like that looks pretty okay. Maybe it has to be lower. Yeah, that looks all right. And let's create some classic tweens. Now do the same thing with our easing and we're good to go. Easy. Easy. So you can see that you can get the same result with symbols as you can shapes, but symbols, you don't have to apply any of the shape tweens because you're moving the entire symbol as a whole. Okay, good. Easy money. Let's quickly blast through the rest of these. Let's do the nostrils, uh, things that don't need to change, and then we will um, get to the fun bit of doing the hair and the mouth. However, there are some things which uh, are pretty interesting anyway with the eyebrows. Let's do those first. I'm gonna get brow left, so left brow as a new layer. And I'm gonna come over to my pen tool again. And if I just quickly grab all my previous layers and outline them, I can start seeing what I've drawn before. And I kind of like this pencil-y kind of look. Now, all the lines we've drawn so far have been very clean and very sharp. But I want this to respect that pencil -y look. Okay, that's pretty simple to do. What I'm going to do is just zoom in. I'm going to draw myself my eyebrow like I normally would. Like so. But this time I'm going to change the brush style. So if you click on here, you can see you can get a bunch of different standard styles for your pens. Okay, different things like that. However, you've actually got a whole bunch of new um, style brushes inside of the the new version of animate cc for these eyebrows i am going to turn object drawing on just because it's going to make editing these a little bit easier uh, i don't actually want these dots i'm just going to turn that back to the normal one here like so oops uh, like so um, and then i'm going to go to window and brushes brush library now this brings up a whole new selection of really cool vector brushes. For example, arrows, artistic, decorative, line art. If I go to artistic and open up the chalk charcoal, you can see that some of these look really cool. If I double click chalk round, I can add that to my document. And then that means I can select it from the list of styles here, like so. And now my eyebrow has got this chalk style line. And the good news is this is completely vector as well. So if I increase the stroke width to maybe six, that's going to look pretty good. And there is our eyebrow. It's the wrong color at the moment though. I'm going to make it this dark color here. Oops, excuse me. Oops, excuse me again. <laughs> there we go. Uh, and I'm going to draw in my right brow. Our brow. Uh, I'll leave it blank though and what I'll do is I'll in fact just turn this into a symbol as well with F8 and I'll call this brow and you can see that appears in our library along with our horn as well as well as our image that we dropped in earlier and I'm just going to copy this and paste it on this new layer. I can then modify, transform and flip that and there's our second eyebrow. Okay, I'm just going to rotate a little bit more though so it's not quite so symmetrical. And Bob's your uncle. We're good to go. I'm going to move these anchor points off to the side a little bit though so that it looks like he's when they move they'll be moving from the right position. And we'll get to animating these. Let's go to our middle keyframe here. We can see where all the horns have gone. Let's bring those back in though. And let's start positioning these. So let's rotate both of them away. Let's bring them a bit higher up like this. Maybe like that. And let's separate them out just a little bit more, like so. So that as they come back down, they'll be furrowing their bro more. Let's position these in the correct part for the, our, our new drawing, because obviously our new drawing doesn't follow our sketch entirely. Let's have them maybe be like this. I think that looks quite nice. And then let's copy this information 
and paste it on the end. However, if we were to copy and then paste this over here, it would paste them on the same layer. For example, if I delete both of these and hit paste, you can see that only one of these layers has content in them. So the best thing to do is to actually copy keyframes. Copy frames here, paste frames here. And that keeps them in the same context. Let's add some classic tweens in. And like always, let's add our cubic animation. And let's take a look. Looking pretty good. Um, however, as his eyes crunch down, I want them to squish a little bit as well. So what I'm going to do is individually select these. Squish them. Squish them. And then move them down slightly. Let's copy those frames again. Paste them over here at the end. And take a look. He looks like he's actually stretching there. Cool. Happy with that. Let's quickly do the nostrils. Grab our nostril boys and let's outline these layers and lock them all because we're done with them for now at least. And I'm going to quickly draw in some little nostrils and I'm just going to grab the brush tool with B and I'm going to grab the right color, which is going to be the same color as our eyebrows. So I'll just bring one of those back in. Like so. And I'm just going to quickly boop and boop like that. Nice and simple. Let's outline on un outline all of these and let's find out where these nostrils are going to position. That looks a little bit too perfect and round. So what I'm going to do is hit Q to bring up free transform and I'm just going to scrimmy these ones out a little bit and then pop them in the right position on the page. Again, for this one, rather than messing around with shape tweens and shape hints, I'm just going to turn them into a symbol nostrils and I'm going to quickly pop them into the right place. I think that looks pretty good. Let's stick them in the middle and let's bring them up and have him be really, really squishing his mouth up like that. So they're going to stretch out. In fact, maybe because he's all hunched down, like with the eyebrows, we can squish them. Yeah, I think that looks a bit better. So let's do that instead. Paste that in place there. Okay, good. Let's click both of these, drag over them and choose classic tween. We can go over to our classic ease, ease in and out, cubic. Yeah, it looks like he's really breathing in as he opens up. Awesome, 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 awesome. Let's do the eyes then, and then we can get onto the cool part of the hair and the frame by frame part of the um, food and the inner part of his mouth. So we'll just finish up this episode by doing the eyes. I'm gonna grab eye left, eye right, and I'm going to go back to my pen tool and with my chalk brush still on and my stroke width of maybe, let's do eight this time. I'm just going to guess at where these eyes should be rather than using the sketch because they're quite simple. Just big, angry squints like that. That looks okay. Let's move them out a little bit though so they're not quite touching. And let's bring this guy down. Looks good to me. I left, F8, I right. So now we have two symbols here. Let's change the anchor point of these symbols to be the inner parts of each eye. And let's make sure this one is on the right layer. Like so. And let's get to animating. F6 on those last keyframes, F6 on the middle one, and just reposition. Now, I know I'm going a bit fast through this bit, but we've done it a billion times now. You guys should be totally fine with creating symbols, moving them around. Um, I'm going to shrink this guy a little bit so it looks like he's turning his head a touch uh, as he lifts it into the air. And then we're going to choose classic tween, ease in and out, cubic. And let's look at what we've done so far. I'm pretty happy with that. That looks quite good, in fact. All right, perfect. I think that'll do for episode two. Uh, and when you join me in episode three, we're going to be doing some complicated stuff with graphics and motion symbols and uh, masks, of all things. So look forward to that. And hopefully the next episode uh, will probably be the second class. There will be four episodes in this series. Um, hope you enjoy all of them. And I hope to see you all next time for the next episode. Remember to subscribe for more tips, tricks, and tutorials. Thanks for watching.